Hi guys. So <clears throat> today we're going to try something a little different. Something I haven't seen done yet on YouTube. So what I have here is my drawing board with so it's a light up board. And I can hit the light to see through the drawing. So what I'm going to do here is I want to take the UV resin from J Diction. We're kind of going to draw a little bit with it today or trace whatever one you want to call it um something a little different something that i haven't seen done yet so i put some in a little small bottle with a fine lid and i put some in a bigger bottle with a thicker lid um, i put black tape on them that way to keep the light out so <clears throat> as you know uv resin dries from uv light and i don't want the light from my side getting in I have a fan next to me blowing on me, keep the fumes down, have the window open, got my gloves on, got my light handy, so what we're going to do here, and before it dries, hit it real fast with the UV light, kind of secure it in place. I haven't seen this done yet, so this is this is something new, something different, um, we'll see how it turns out. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the entire picture with UV resin, and then I will fill it in with regular two-part resin to get the color of the figure I'm trying to do. This isn't a fast progress this, uh, process. This is a fairly slow one because you got to do a little at a time because you don't want the UV resin to move on you. You want to kind of get it hardened in place so you don't have to you don't have to you know stay for the whole minute. You know just enough to get it secure. We'll go back over it after I'm done the whole thing and we'll hit it with the big UV resin light and let that a lot harder than you think it is because you're trying not to squeeze too hard you gotta squeeze it hard enough to get the resin out of the little tiny tip so I'm using a, um, the ring, a regular silicone blue mat <coughs> to trace this on like I said I had to use uh, a light board underneath so I, it would project the image through the blue for me but like I said this is something I haven't seen done yet on YouTube so I don't know if you want to call it tracing or drawing or what exactly we want to call it yet, but it's almost like in like making stained glass where I'm putting the outer frame first and then I'm going to fill it all back in with color later. So we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's something I haven't seen yet. So we'll try it and see how it turns out. And I could use the thicker bottle too for these bigger lines. Find it a lot more easier to use the little bottle with the get better control over where the resin goes how much comes out the good thing is is that if you mess up before you cure it you can always just wipe it off and do it again I do notice that in some spots if you don't put enough resin that it separates so and you don't want that because when we go to fill it in later we don't want any gaps in between the UV resin and the regular resin because you don't want to you know, if you're doing black eyelashes and a red body, you don't want the colors. He said just enough to get it. What I do back here is I'll go back over if I see a spot that's too thin. It's a good thing about UV resin is you can you can go back and make the lines as thick as you want. You can put layer on top of layer on top of layer to make it thick. Um, there are some spots that I see where the resin has separate separated from another line that I've already done. So I'll go back through and. I'll put some more resin in there to connect the dots. That way, like I said, because you don't want it to, you know, flow out into the next color when we go to put color in this. Build up your layers as thick as you want. Some mica powder in here to get um, black lines. Um, you'd have to use a very fair amount because you want to let the UV light <clears throat> penetrate the resin. So this is our first attempt at this. We'll try it with the clear see how it turns out and if it works well then we'll go back on another project and we'll try it with black. I picked the Angry Bird guy from Angry Birds because eh, he's really not that detailed and it's it's fairly easy for our first project to do a simple drawing. Um, you don't want to get too detailed on your first one and mess it all up so work smarter not harder here is what I am a believer in. 
So we already have the whole first eye and the first eyelash done. And it's, it's fairly, it's fairly hard. So what we'll do is go on to the next eyelash and just keep squeezing it out. The good thing about the UV resin is, is that it's not going to cure on you right away, especially if you're not working near a window. If you're working in a regular room, then then you're good. You're not going to it's not going to harden up on you too fast. Go back over some areas it's a little fine. Go back over it, squeeze some more out. Get your light, hit it with your light and harden her up. Just keep your bottle out of the way of the, you know, the UV light because the last thing you want to do is get the tip of the bottle you're using um, to harden on you. So that would be, that would, that would not be fun. I mean, I have more of these bottles so I could you know go back and switch them out I got these little tiny bottles um, I think I got 10 of them off of Amazon they were really that expensive but I, I find them for fine details like this they work great to squeeze out just enough get the line quality that you're looking for see there it's separated and that just has to do with the the mat so if I hit it real fast before it has a chance to separate <coughs> if there's grease or something like I cleaned the mat with some 99% alcohol and then I also went over the mat with some everyday regular nail polish because the nail polish helps remove um, excess resin too well not nail polish nail polish remover because of the acetate, acetone inside of it it eats the little spots of resin that are on your on your stuff you know, and you want to make sure you get as much up as you can. Like I said, you know, you can just, when you see something that doesn't look right, you can just fill it back in with some more resin until you get the quality that you're looking for. I do have bubbles in it, but like I said, this is our, our first try at this. Um, so I'm not really worrying about bubbles right now. I'm just worrying about trying to make sure I get the quality of wine the way I want it. I think when I do the body part, I'll pull out the bigger bottle because then I can get them done faster. Right now, for the fine details, I'm just <clears throat> going to keep using this small bottle here. A little harder to squeeze it through the tip because UV resin is kind of thick already. But you know, with the right amount of pressure, you can you can get it out. You can get it to squeeze out. If you guys have seen this done on the internet <clears throat> or on YouTube before, please you know share the channels with me or the videos. I'd like to see more of uh, this kind of work done. Like I said, this is the first time I've seen it done, so I figured to give it a shot. <clears throat> so far, I have both eyes <clears throat> and both his eyelashes done. So what I'm going to do now is just to get it out of the way. I'm going to do the two feathers on his head. Probably get a long neck lighter and burn out the bubbles that are in your resin if you want. Only problem is you have to do a little at a time because you want to make sure you get. Your resin hardened before it starts to you know, move on you. Like I said, I don't know if you want to call it drawing or tracing or outlining or I haven't quite come up with a name for it yet. So, like I said, we'll, we'll say it's tracing slash drawing. Good thing too is when this little bottle runs out, I have a, a bigger bottle that I showed you earlier in the video that I just refill this with. I find the J Diction resin, UV resin, to be the best. Re UV resin out there. I mean, you're going to have some areas where it's a little thicker than others, but I'm sure if you want to, you know, fix those thick areas, you could probably go back over that with a with a sharp knife and do some finer work with it. But like I said, for our first time doing this, we'll see how it works out with this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the bigger bottle here. One of the things I like to do is so what I'm doing here is trying to get the big area in the middle done first, and then I'll work my way. <coughs> down to his feet. Burn it out there that I didn't need. Just wipe it off. You will get bubbles. Actually going faster than I thought it would. You could probably get away with using a uh, colored UV resin too, but you'd need a really big... Do all the outline with the UV resin and then we'll fill in all the colors with colored two-part resin. But before we do all the coloring, I have a larger UV light that I will use. Put on top and give it a good few minute cure to make sure that all the little tiny spots you know and the good thing is that you're putting it on thin enough to where you don't have to worry about putting anything from underneath to, to cure. Normally if you're using it to make gems and things you you 
cure the underside of it too, but you don't really have to. Make your lines as thick as you want, as thin as you want. Remember, you want to make them somewhat thick because you are going to be going back in and filling it with colored resin later. I mean, I see some spots up here that I'll have to fix with the little bottle. You use whatever, you know, you want. I mean, you could use the fine tip one here through the whole project. Um, I just find it easier to use the thicker tipped one to do the bigger layers. Other part of the beam canal will be the lower part. You have a little tiny uh, UV light. I also got the big out here. Got that off the tube. I like the big one to do. The big one to try to get more of an area. Um, the big one to use to put it on for a minute or two minutes at a time on it. This one I think is just. Do a line, so what you'll do is you'll, you know, you'll do a line with the UV resin, hit it with the light, do a line with the resin, hit it with the light, you just want to keep going back and forth, back and forth, because you want to make sure it's all cured up. Like I said, you just have to, just enough to get it to where it's hardened, but you don't have to worry about curing this thing 100% yet, because we're going to go back and redo all that. Probably get away with using the regular UV bottle, but I find it easier to use the little plastic bottle, because you can get a better grip on it. You have more control than you do with the big, the bigger bottle here. Put it back on because you don't want that to cure up on you. I'm working from the top down from then the side over because I don't want to have to lay my hand on stuff that I've already done. I just find it a little easier. Once we get down to this area, I'll move the camera over so we can get a better view of that side of this side of the project so you guys can see what's going on. The way my hand's not in the way because if I do it this way you're going to not be able to see what I'm doing because my hand will be there. All we'll do is we'll move this guy over here. You'll be able to tell if you're putting too little on because you'll see it start to separate. Like I said, you want to hit it real fast that way it has a chance to cure. The thing about the bigger bottle is you get thicker lines.
Thank you. 